<laughs> Hello everybody, my name is John and welcome to this year's Scrap In Challenge. The Scrap In Challenge is where a bunch of YouTube content creators get together and build something from their scrap bins. So for a complete list of the participants, check out the description. For me, I decided to use some leftover bamboo flooring and some scrap leather to build this blanket chest and I hope you enjoy it. So I know what your number one question is going to be and let's find out. So I have one side flushed up and I'm using the top one as the guide to cut the rest of them. But this cut is pretty accurate, close to 90, but it's not close enough for hand cut dovetails. So I have to fix that using my shooting board. But uh, well, bamboo is pretty tough to cut across the grain. But after a sharpening, it seems to work better. The layout on the top side of the floor is fairly straightforward, but the other side of the floor is a little bumpy. The pencil writes very well on the end grain of the bamboo. The finish on the back side of the bamboo floor makes it very difficult to mark with a pencil. A lot of aspects of working with bamboo is quite a pain, but not sawing. It was very easy to saw. I sharpened all my chisels before I started working on this bamboo piece. And by the end of it, they needed another sharpening. Normally I would clean this out with a chisel, but it was not getting the job done. Uh, a quarter inch chisel here is the biggest one I can use to push and clean up some of these shoulder cuts. Here I'm transferring the tails onto the pins with a sharp knife, but these lines are very faint. So I actually have to go back in with the chisel to refine them. But marking with a knife with the grain was very easy. One thing that became apparent as I was working was that chiseling along the grain was much easier than chiseling across the grain. The best kind of joints are ones where the two pieces of material fit together so tightly that it almost cracks the joints. And in this fitting, if you're using wood, some of the wood will compress more and some wood will compress less. But rarely do wood split or you have a good feel for it when it's about to split so you can adjust the joint. In this case, the bamboo, there's a very little sort of feedback or feel to when it's going to crack. It doesn't feel like it's going to crack, but then it just splits. I'm using a miter dovetail for the frame of the lid. Miter dovetail. So I've cut the housing for the dados of the lid on a table saw, and I don't have a dado set, so I just moved the fence over. I just finished cutting out all the pieces that I think will be for the lid, and I lined up the lid against it. And I think I'm gonna have probably an inch or so to spare. A lot of these don't have, uh, we'll have a tongue on one side and no groove on the other side. So I'll have to do some trimming to make sure that everything fits together. The dados don't need to be 100% perfect for the lid. So I'm just using a table saw and my miter gauge. That's more than enough to get the exact dados that I need. I like power tools because it gets stuff done fast, but it doesn't quite have the finesse that I like. So things don't quite fit. And it's better to cut them slightly too big so I can trim it down than it is to cut it too small and to have to add back. So when I slide the next piece into it, I have the back of the floor here. And that's going to create the tongue into the groove. And that leaves this gap. And the same thing is going to happen when I stack these, the, the different layers together. So you can see this is the inside of the floor and it has met up the top side, but the back side of the floor, there's a gap. And this is what I like to do is shave some, um, shave both the top
tongue side and the groove side down so that I can get a tighter fit like this one over here where this there's probably maybe a half a millimeter gap in there. It's a very small gap. So what I'm going to do is simply trim the inside edge here on both pieces and get rid of most of this radius that there's a slight radius here. Just get rid of most of that and may have to flatten out the groove side as well. Gluing something this big is definitely a challenge. So I had to do them in parts. I've already glued up the lid here and it's already dry. So I'm using that as the base frame for the next two layers. And I'll use those two layers once it's dry to put the final layer with the bottom on it. One of the last things I still need to do is to cut the housing for the dados for the bottom. The side with the pins on it can go straight through, but the side with the tails, I'll have to do a little plunge routing. Alright, so I ran into a problem. These three pieces of bamboo are the biggest pieces I have left. That's not going to be enough to cover the bottom at all. But for me, when we remodeled, when we put down the, uh, the bamboo floors, I took a lot of the old shelf out of the closet. So that leave me some of these, these pine boards that's been stained on one side to use as the bottom. And also, our table that I had made uh, was not strong enough to stand up to our little toddler, so it's pretty much broken, and I tried to repair it once and he broke it again. So I think we'll have to build a little more sturdier table. So between these four pieces, I have just about the right um, length cover up the bottom. Before I can fit this bottom into the grooves here, I need to square off this corner. When assembling the bottom, I put glue along the face grains, but very little on the end grains. And I left the middle part unglued because I'm going to add a divider and use that to push all the pieces to the side. Before I could apply finish to the outside, I used a power planer and a power sander to remove the grooves. Here's the original surface. It's got all these um, raised parts and that raised parts gets knocked down as I plane it. And over here, it gets pretty smooth. And this is what it looks like once it gets rough sanded. So here's something I'm going to remember the hard way. I was planing in this direction and it went a little bit too far and it basically knocked this, split this tail up. So lesson learned. Remember to always plane towards the middle, especially on bamboo and especially because these tails are slightly raised relative to the flat surface here. is made from two pieces of bamboo epoxy together. So after I cleaned up the legs a bit, I put it up against the bottom of this chest and I think the width is good. This part looks pretty good. The depth here on this side. What I think doesn't work is the height here. I think this is too tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove probably inch and a quarter and leave like inch and a half here 
I think that's going to look a lot better. I think it's going to look a lot more proportional. Whenever I create something, I like to incorporate or emulate the depth of creation. That is to say, if we were to look at a lake from a distance, it might look very calm. But as we get closer and closer to it, we might see that it has ripples, and we might see the fish, and we might see the bugs that are landing on it. And if we were to take a quantum mechanic point of view, uh, and get even closer, we can see that the molecules and electrons and the way they're moving, it's quite chaotic. I think whenever I create something, I try to you know, incorporate these uh, multiple layers. And I think to be ignorant of these layers or to ignore these layers of life and creation leaves the work incomplete. I've had this piece of scrap leather for Gosh, I don't really know how many years, several years. It's a little bit dirty, so I can't really use it for a, a lot of projects. But for this one, it seems like the appropriate time to use it. And I'm stretching this leather over the top, just using a lot of goop. You notice that I was wearing a face mask because I had to do all of this indoors. And that goop stuff really is really stinky. I think I need about two more inches of flexibility. I think this is the best I'm going to do. Okay, see you later. <laughs>